In this video lecture, we're going to look at contractility and how that affects stroke volume and therefore cardiac output. So contractility is also called inotropy. It's related to the intracellular calcium levels so that if I can increase calcium inside the cardiac muscle cell, that means I make more cross bridges and therefore if I get more cross bridges, I get a stronger contraction. If I get a stronger contraction, I can push more blood out or eject more blood out of the heart, increasing stroke volume. Thereby, if I have a higher stroke volume, I'm going to leave less residual volume of blood or have a lower um, end systolic volume. So basically, how do I get to the point I have a higher amount of calcium in that cell then? Well, the sympathetic nervous system and the catecholamines, that is norepinephrine and epinephrine, are going to have an effect on that, but I'm going to save that for the next slide. This slide, I'll just talk about heart rate. Now, heart rate, an increase in heart rate, can actually increase inotropy. And the way it works is this. When the heart's beating so fast, remember, every time it beats, it generates an action potential. So that means sodium's moving in, potassium's moving out. So I need to restore those ions to their correct side, and that's the job of a sodium-potassium pump. Sodium is going to be pumped out, potassium is going to be pumped in, restoring the levels of those ions on the right side of the membrane. But if the heart rate is so fast, that is, I'm generating, generating a lot of action potentials, I, the sodium-potassium pump can't keep up. So I end up with more intercellular calcium. I have more, or excuse me, sodium. I have more sodium inside than I normally would. That means I don't have as big a sodium gradient. That is, I don't have a lot of sodium outside compared to inside. Now remember, the sodium is the driving force of the sodium-calcium exchanger. It's that high concentration of sodium outside that allows sodium to diffuse in that causes a protein to change its shape so it can pump calcium out. If I have a low sodium gradient because I've got too much sodium left inside the neuron, or the, excuse me, the muscle cell, then that means I'm not going to get as good a, uh, or as big amount of calcium pumped out. So calcium stays inside the muscle cell. Therefore, I have a higher level of calcium in the muscle cell. I have more cross bridges for me. I get better contractility or inotropy. In this slide, we can look at the sympathetic nervous system and norepinephrine and epinephrine effects on inotropy. The whole idea here is norepinephrine or epinephrine is going to bind to beta adrenergic receptors on the cell membrane of those cardiac muscle cells. That's going to trigger a second messenger system, and you can see here the end of that second messenger system is the activation of protein kinase. Now protein kinase then in turn will do one of three things. It can increase intracellular, that is calcium levels inside the cell, either by increasing the extracellular calcium levels by increasing the number of calcium channels here, so more calcium enters, or increasing the number of calcium channels of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, so more calcium enters. That way I have more calcium inside the cell. Again, that means more cross bridge formation, a better contraction, and therefore a higher stroke volume. The other thing that the protein kinase will do is speed the calcium removal from the cytoplasm so that we get big stores of calcium in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. That way at the next beat I get a huge dump of calcium into the cytoplasm, increase the amount of calcium, and therefore I'll get a really big contraction at that next beat. Now certain drugs are going to affect contractility. We have positive inotropic agents. So if you think about these, positive inotropic would enhance contractility or inotropy. One of those is that's commonly prescribed for people that have congestive heart failure is digitalis. Digitalis or digoxin has a negative effect on the sodium-potassium pump. That is, it slows that sodium-potassium pump down. That means I can't pump sodium out. I don't have a big, huge concentration gradient anymore. I have more sodium inside than I normally do. So I don't have a lot of sodium outside, little inside. It's more balanced. 
If I don't have a lot of sodium outside, then I'm not going to have a big drive of that sodium diffusing in, getting that sodium calcium exchanger, which is represented here on the slide as NCX, that sodium calcium exchanger. I don't have the big drive of the sodium in that allows that protein to pump calcium out. That means I have more calcium inside, I get a better contraction, increased contractility. The beta adrenergics or beta agonists are going to enhance the effects of the calcium channels just like norepinephrine does. Um, it's going to in increase the number of calcium channels, which means more calcium can diffuse in with every action potential, and therefore we end up with more calcium, meaning more cross bridges, stronger contraction, that is increased inotropy. There are also negative inotropic drugs. One of those is a calcium channel blockers, and that's one shown here. Calcium channel blockers do exactly what they're named. They block calcium channels. That means I get less calcium into the cell. If I have less calcium, I make less cross bridges, so I have a weaker contraction, and that's why it would be a negative inotropic. It would decrease contractility. This kind of drug is often prescribed for people that have high blood pressure because a, a high stroke volume means high cardiac output and high cardiac output would lead to higher blood pressure and that's not what we want if the person already has high blood pressure. So that ends this part of our look at cardiac output. And the last thing we'll do is look at the, effect, the factors that affect heart rate.